Hi, I'm Angie Wolsey and welcome to another edition of The Amazing Art Show. We have got a great project today and I'm going to go over the list of the things that you're going to need for the project. We are going to need a very large yardstick. If the flatter you can get it, so it should be a real thin one, the better. If you can't get a thin one, a thick one will work, so it'll be okay. We need some Elmer's glue. You're going to need some uh, gesso. We talked about that last time in our last project, so you're going to be using that again. You're going to need a really big brush as well as a smaller size brush. And you're also going to need something, some kind of an acrylic paint that you can start to add color with. Um, if you want to get really crazy, you could also get some kind of a glitter paint. And there are a few extra little things that I'll talk to you a little further along once we get started on the project. Also, we will be needing a lot, a lot of newspaper. So boys and girls, go get it out of the recycling bin because you're going to need it for this project. And this project is so cool. All right, let's get started. We are going to need to get your pieces of newspaper out and you're going to need a full sheet of newspaper. So those little half sheets are not going to do anything for you, so put those back in the recycling bin. And what we're going to be doing is with our sheet, I want you to turn it where it's kind of on the diagonal, so you should have a point, point of the paper pointing towards your stomach and then one straight out in front of you. And then with your yardstick, you are going to start to roll your paper. So take your corner and just roll it over. It doesn't matter if it overlaps or anything like that. And you're just going to start rolling. Now once you do this, once you get to almost to the halfway point, I want you to start laying down a couple little lines of glue. Now when you do your glue, instead of doing it out here, you really want to do it more on the yardstick. So do it to that paper that's already wrapped around the yardstick. And you don't have to do a whole lot. And you want to keep these pulled real tight as you're rolling. And the reason why we're not going to do it on the paper and we want to put the glue on the yardstick is because as you roll, you don't want the yardstick to end up in the glue. So once again, I'm going to put a little more glue and I'm going to continue to roll. Now boys and girls, this is a project. I'm telling you, it is well worth your time to do it. It is so cool and it, the finished product is so neat. However, it's one of those projects that it takes some time, a lot of prep time, because what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to roll a ton of these little strips that we're making right now. Now once you get down here towards the end, it's okay to go ahead and take your glue and put it out towards the edges, and you really want to get some on that point. Now, when you get finished, you can pull the yardstick out, use all your muscles, and pull that out. Your newspaper is going to be cylinder kind of shape. So what you're going to do is either with your hand, you're just going to flatten it out. I like to use my ruler because it gets it really nice and flat. So what you're going to need to do is get in front of the TV, find a really good program to watch because you're going to be there for a little bit. And I want you to make as many of these little things as you can because we're going to be needing a lot of them for our project. We are actually going to be making a bowl today. So once you have gotten all of your little pieces and you're ready to go, this is what I need you to do next. Grab one of your pieces, make sure that it is nice and flat. I'm going to flatten this one one more time. It got a little crunched in the car ride over. All right, so I'm going to take this and I'm just going to kind of fold it over. I'm not exactly at the tip, I'm just a little ways down. I'm going to fold this over and I'm going to start rolling in a spiral shape. So we have talked about those spiral shapes before. And this whole process that we're doing today is basically, you could do this whole process in clay. It's called coiling, and we've talked about coiling before. But this time, instead of doing it with clay, you're going to actually be doing it with paper. So what I'm doing is I'm just starting to roll these pieces, and you want to keep it super, super tight. So really hold it tight with your fingers while you're rolling. Now once you get going on this and you get a good base going, it won't be quite as hard. You won't have to hold it quite as tight. So you're going to keep rolling here. Now once I get to about halfway, I'm actually going to stop and I'm going to do a little bit of glue. It doesn't take a whole lot. You don't want it oozing out all over the place. And every couple rolls, you're going to put a little bit of glue down. 
Now, once you get it to a certain point, if it starts to slip out a little bit, you can take your fingers and kind of push this together because you want the base of it to be, you know, real flat and even as much as it can be with a coil. And so I'm just going to continue working on this. And notice that I, at first I was holding it up like this. Once you get it about to this point, it's a whole lot easier if you'll put it down on a table because you can really kind of push and roll. So it's kind of like a rolling pin in a way because you're kind of flattening out that paper as you roll. And as you're doing this, your paper's going to kind of kink up a little bit, but it's not that big of a deal. Just keep pressing down and rolling and it'll all work out fine. All right, so I've got my first roll done and I've got it, it's a little bit raised up here. So all I'm gonna do is just mash it between my fingers and my hand and just kind of get it flat again because we want that to be really flat. All right, now, from this point on, you've got the basic concept. We're gonna continue rolling this and rolling it and rolling it until it gets bigger and bigger. Now, as you're doing this, I'm gonna tell you a couple things. When you're doing your newspaper rolls and you're rolling and rolling, boys and girls, your hands are gonna get super dirty. <laughs> So don't do this on white carpet or anything like this. You want to get on a table where you're up and you're on a surface that it doesn't matter if it gets dirty. So I said to get in front of the TV, but I don't mean on the floor. So get in a safe place so that you don't ruin any of mom's things. And as I begin to start adding my next rolls on, you want to just put a couple bit, bits of glue there. And instead of having to fold this one over like we started this last one, you can just take it put it right on top and I usually kind of wiggle it around a little and hold it a little so that it'll stay in place and that's when I usually flip it down and I start to go ahead and start rolling all right so we're going to continue with this and remember when I said that you were going to need tons and tons of these little things because it goes pretty fast the hardest part's making all the little all the little rolls like these, but once you get going on making the pot, it really goes really quick. So I'm going to finish off on this roll, and then I'm going to show you a couple different things. Now, what we're working on now is the base of your paper pot, and so this is going to be the bottom. That's another reason why I was telling you we want it really nice and flat. So when you're setting it down, this is what will sit on the surface and the bowl will come up from here. All right? Okay, so let me show you. I've been rolling and rolling. <laughs> and so I've got a pretty good size here. Now, when you are starting to add on your pieces that will start making the sides, you've got a couple choices and I'm going to go over those with you now. You want a pretty good size base unless you're making something really little. But you have to remember that your base kind of tells you what size you're gonna, your bowl's gonna end up being. So if you have something really small, you know, your base is small, then your bowl's gonna be small. So these are one of those things, the bigger you can do them, the better they look. So I would really encourage you to try to get your base pretty big, you know, like as big as your face would be a really good size to go for. All right, now, Boys and girls, some people might ask, well, how many, how many of these little things is this? I don't know exactly because I wasn't counting. I just got going and I was so excited because it was looking so good that I forgot to count. But if I had to guess, I would say it's probably between 15 to 20 for just the base, all right? And then after that, it, it's all different depending on what your bowl is gonna look like, okay? All right, so the next part is we're gonna start building the sides of our bowl. Now, you're gonna need your strips again, and this time, whenever you start to put the glue on your strips, you are going to put it down towards one of the ends. So what I mean by that is you're gonna put it here, not up here in the middle, not up at the top, but down on the bottom. So, usually what I do is I get a pretty good little bit going there, and then just a little bit here, and it doesn't have to be a lot to hold it, but I will tell you this, as we start to add these on, you're gonna have to hold it for a little bit and let it, you know, catch on before you can move on to the next part. And I also mentioned to you earlier that part of this is you 
You want to try to keep this as tight as possible. The tighter you keep those little pieces of paper by making them all adhere to each other, the better your bowl is going to turn out. Okay? All right, so what I'm going to do is instead of doing it even here like I have been doing, I want to start building it up. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my paper about halfway up and I'm going to start getting it to stick. Now, when I do this, I usually just kind of wrap it first to where it goes all the way around. And it's going to be a little slippery and kind of move around a little bit. Now, what I want to do is go back in there with my hand and kind of smooth it out because I will get little wrinkles in there. And the wrinkles are what kind of messes you up later. So you want to try to get those out as best you can. And there's lots of spinning it around and you kind of work out those little wrinkles in the newspaper. And then once you get that going, this one's looking pretty good. Everything around this edge is sticking really good. I've gotten all the little wrinkles out. So now I can go ahead and continue to bring this around. So as you can see, I've now got my first raised up layer on here, okay? Now, remember it's about halfway up. If you try to go up too fast, your bowl's going to be real flimsy, so you don't want to do that. So make sure that you take your time only halfway up. And um, also, go back once you get it on there. If something isn't level, meaning here it's not level, then you can push this down or pull it up as you need to. And one of the things that I kind of kept doing as I was making my example for class today is that you know I kept kind of looking at it. Sometimes I would tip it over just to kind of feel and if it felt even, then I knew I was doing a good job. All right, so I'm going to continue to add my pieces on here. And boys and girls, remember what I said about making those really good and flat? And always come in. Your first one, that first little edge that you put down, you want a good bit of glue on there. As you get further out here, it's not that big of a deal, but you want a little bit. I had the best time making my bowl. And all my kids at school were, what in the world are you doing? What are you doing with all that newspaper? And then once they started to see the bowl, they were just like, oh my gosh, we want to do that project. So I knew that this would be a good one to bring to class. Now, I want to show you real quick. Here is where my last one ended. And I want to overlap that I don't want there to be two beginnings or two endings there. I want there to be a good solid piece over where that ending was. So I'm going to bring this around here and hold it for a few minutes and let it stick good. And then I'm going to continue to bring this around. And notice, um, as I'm doing this, a lot of times you'll see my hands and I'm holding it and I'm spinning it as I'm holding it. And boys and girls, in the coil method, this is this is one of the techniques. Even if you're working with clay, you kind of hold it as you begin to spin it because it helps you to keep everything level and it helps you to get everything to adhere. So I've now done another layer right on top of the same layer. I didn't raise it up any. So it's typically you go two layers around and then you can raise up if you would like to. If you don't, and if you just want to keep going out like this, you can, and then you might want to raise up a layer out here. That's kind of up to you as to how you want your design to look. So as I continue, I'm going to show you my next example. What I have done here is I'm just gradually, very gradually, starting to build my bowl shape up. Okay? And like I said, remember that you do two layers of the newspaper strips that are the same, and then if you want to bring it up a layer, bring it up a layer. On this particular bowl, the one that I was showing you with before, I came up halfway as I started to build the edges of my bowl. Now, you don't have to come up halfway. You could come up in smaller increments than just half. So on this particular bowl that I did here, I've just been barely coming up each and every time because I want it to be a real gradual kind of a building of the sides. And this bowl, when I get done with it, will probably be just really, really huge, which is exactly what I'm going for. So, like I said, it's going to kind of be up to you to decide what kind of shape you want your bowl to take. 
I will tell you this. Go back to this one really quick. As you're doing this, if you want your bowl to be a bowl that kind of goes out like this, you're going to keep building the outer parts because it will continue to build it out this direction. If you would rather have a bowl that's more like a cylinder shape, you can also do that. The way you're going to do that, if you're interested in that, is that you're going to do two on the outside, just like we just did, and then, but your next one, your third one that you're going to do, you're actually going to come in and you're going to put a layer inside. So your glue will go, put this this way, your glue will go on the edge again. This one is a little trickier because as you are putting it towards the inside, it's a little harder to get it to hold, but not impossible. So if you're patient and if you're really you know, good at holding things and being patient and letting it, letting it do its thing, you got to let that glue start to dry. So I'm now taking this and we're kind of using what we've already built up, this lip that we built up before. We're using it kind of as a, a backdrop because we're going to be adhering this other piece onto it. Now usually what I do is I kind of get this in there as best I can. It's not going to look pretty for a second here. I've got this piece coming out here and this one going here and that's okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to again put this one in here, kind of tuck this one down in here. And then once I get everything kind of tucked in there, that's when I really want to go back using that same kind of technique of pinching as you're working. And then you're going to need to give yourself a little bit of give because there may be spots where it needs to roll back one direction a little bit. So if that happens, you know, just, you kind of have to work quickly, like I said, with this particular method. But you would put this all together like this. Okay, so now what we have are those two layers that we did, the one that went on the inside. Now what I would do, especially if I'm building the one that's more of a cylinder type shape, I would then come back and I'm going to do another one on the outside that would go around like this. And then I would keep interchanging those two. So the next one I would put on would be my one that would go up in here on the inside. And I would keep going outside, inside, outside, inside until I get a tall kind of a cylinder shape. My final example that I have for you today <coughs> at the very end of the project today is more of a bowl that's more of a cylinder shape. But the one I'm going to show you right now is this one. And this particular bowl has been done more in the method where you just gradually come up. And I have actually, you can see all your layers here. And the next part of our thing that we're going to be doing today is we're going to be adding the gesso onto our project. So I've already started on the inside of my bowl because it takes quite a bit of time to do. So this is what I've been telling my kids is if you will start on the inside of your bowl, you really can just glop this stuff on and just spread it out as best you can. You are going to have some holes and some gaps and things like that. That's okay, it's not that big of a deal. Actually, if you want to, if you'll get your first layer of gesso on there, let it dry. You can actually come back in later. You can fill in those if you want to with more gesso. You could even, um, if you've got some kind of a molding paste, you can fill those in if they bother you. I kind of like them. I think it kind of gives it some character, so I'm going to leave my holes there. And so you're just going to be getting this and painting this on, and you want a nice, good, thick coat that will, that will go over everything and seal everything. And what the gesso does is it gives you, number one, it gives you a nice, just one color base to start from. Because the fun part is deciding what you're going to do with this afterwards and how you're going to paint it and those types of things that you want to do. So it gives it just a base to start with for color, but it also gives it some stability. Because you'll notice that as you kind of work with this, it's kind of flimsy a little bit and it gets kind of heavy as you begin to put all those layers on there. But this gesso kind of helps to hold everything together, kind of works as like an external kind of glue holding everything together. After you've gotten finished putting gesso all on this, you're going to let it dry and it's going to take a little bit of time to dry, so probably overnight. And after you get done doing that, um, I'm going to talk to you about a couple methods of color that you might want to think about for your bowl. Um, with my bowl, I'm actually making three very big bowls like this. And I'm going to take my bowls and in the center, 
I'm going to paint some really big flowers in the center of my bowl, kind of like George O'Keefe kind of looking flowers. And then I'm going to do some kind of color up here. I haven't quite decided yet. And I'm actually going to take my bowls, and instead of using them necessarily as a bowl, I'm going to use mine as a piece of artwork. So I'm going to put all three of my bowls up on the wall at my house. So I think I'll bring you all a picture of that when I get it done. So that is definitely an option. You might want to think about what kind of a decoration you want to put in here, maybe a pattern, maybe a flower, you know, something for mom for Mother's Day or something like that would be a really great idea. So think about that. Another thing that you can do instead of just doing your regular paint is that you could also come in with tissue paper and you could actually get some of your Elmer's glue if you'll water it down just a little bit and you could actually come in and fill your whole entire bowl with pieces of tissue paper and make it really bright and colorful. You could do that as a whole treatment for your bowl. So that's also an option. Um, something else that's really kind of fun that I've seen done is you can also get some glitter paint and do the inside of your bowl and add some glitter paint to it so it really stands out and has a little bit of sparkle and shine to it. Now, the next thing I want to show you is my finished bowl. So I'm going to put this one down. And remember when I was talking to you about more of a cylinder shaped bowl? This is what I'm talking about. This is a little more cylinder shape. It has a very gradual kind of outward shape to it, but pretty up and down as we go. Now this particular bowl got lots of really great color in there. I will give you a little hint. If you are going to be doing paint, start with your big brush when you're applying your paint, but you're going to get little holes where the big brush can't get in. So that's where your smaller brush comes into play and you can really get up into those little crevices and the cracks. So have both of those size brushes handy because you're going to need both, I promise you. When you get finished painting your bowl, you've done all your decorations, it's all done and ready to go. You're going to need mom or dad's help with this. The last part of your project is that you are going to need some kind of a clear you're going to need some kind of a clear coat sealer to seal your project. Now boys and girls, this is one of those things that you need mom and dad's help. This is very bad for you to breathe. It's not good for you. So you want to be in a well ventilated place and you want to have mom and dad right there with you so that they can help you. So you will also need them to go purchase the, this at the store and you can get this anywhere. It's just a clear, just a clear paint. So if you can pick up some of that, you're going to spray it both outside and inside, and don't forget the bottom. So I hope that you guys come up with some amazing bowls, and I want to leave you today with our art quote. Art is much less important than life, but what a poor life without it. And this particular quote came from Robert Motherwell, who is an American abstract expressionist painter, and you can check out some of his work at the Modern Museum of Fort Worth. So boys and girls, go check that out. And that about wraps up our show for today. Now go out and make some amazing art. Every 30 seconds, another child in America is accidentally poisoned. Fortunately, since many of these poisonings happen at home, there's a lot parents can do to protect their children. First, it's important to recognize which household substances can be poisonous. Many parents don't consider iron pills, furniture polish, dishwashing detergent, or cosmetics to be hazardous. The American College of Emergency Physicians recommends keeping all drugs, medications, household cleaning products, and cosmetics locked up and out of your child's reach. Keep the number of the Poison Control Center near your phone. Keep a small bottle of syrup of Ipecac handy, but don't use it unless your doctor or Poison Control Center tells you to. If you suspect that your child has been poisoned, call 911 or the Poison Control Center. As in any emergency, stay calm and call for help if you are concerned for your child's life or safety. Here are some interesting and entertaining oddities about geography. 
More than half of the coastline of the entire United States is in Alaska. It has 6,640 miles of coastline and including islands has 33,904 miles of shoreline. The Amazon rainforest produces more than 20% of the world's oxygen supply. The Amazon River pushes so much water into the Atlantic Ocean that more than 100 miles at sea off the mouth of the river, one can dip fresh water out of the ocean. Antarctica is the only landmass on Earth that is not under the jurisdiction of a nation. 90% of the world's ice covers Antarctica. This ice also represents 70% of all the fresh water in the world. Antarctica is essentially a desert. The average yearly total precipitation is about two inches. It's also said to be the best place in the world to find meteorites. Dark meteorites show up against the white expanse of ice and snow and don't get covered by vegetation. Canada is an Indian word meaning big village. Toronto is the big village's largest city. Next to Warsaw, the largest Polish population in the world can be found in Chicago. Istanbul, Turkey is the only city in the world located on two continents, Europe and Asia. Formerly known as Constantinople, it was the capital of the Byzantine Empire. Percentage of Africa that is wilderness, 28%. Percentage of North America that is wilderness, 38%. There are no natural lakes in the state of Ohio. Every one is man-made. The first city to reach a population of one million people was Rome, Italy in 133 BC. There is a city called Rome on every continent. Chances that a road is unpaved in the USA, 1%. Chances that a road is unpaved in Canada, 75%. The deepest hole ever made in the world is in Texas. It is as deep as 20 Empire State Buildings, but only three inches wide. We hope you've enjoyed these interesting and entertaining oddities about geography. They've stormed beaches and freed countries. Protected the weak and defeated the strong. Shown courage and compassion. They've raised our flag and our hope. They've been called Leathernecks. They've been called Devil Dogs. But above all, they're called Marines. For the latest tips on helping your child succeed in school, watch Education News, Parents Can Use, where each month we offer lively guests, spirited discussions, visits to good schools, free resources, and education updates from Washington. Please be sure to join us. Skin cancer is the most common of all cancers. It accounts for nearly half of all cancers in the United States, more than one million cases each year. Fortunately, it can often be prevented. Risk factors include unprotected excessive exposure to ultraviolet light, a light complexion, a family history of the disease, and severe sunburns as a child. Tell your doctor if you see any change on your skin, especially in the size or color of a mole or other dark spot, or a new one, a rash, itchiness, tenderness, or pain. The best way to lower your risk of skin cancer is to practice sun safety. Avoid the sun between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. Cover up with protective clothing to guard as much skin as possible when you are out. Use a generous amount of sunscreen with a sun protection factor of 15 or higher, even on cloudy days. Wear sunglasses and cover your head with a wide-brimmed hat to shade your face, ears, and neck. <laughs>